The key to making the world's best apple cider is to start with the best tasting apples. For me, the apple that produces the best apple cider is Fuji. I find it's even better than the best combination of apples. The key is to make sure you're getting only the ripest apples. Look for Fujis that are the darkest red, and if they have any yellow, make sure the yellow is a deep golden yellow, not a light yellow. After washing, core the apples, and then use a melon peeler to cut out the blossom end, the stem end, and the core of the apple. Do that to all of your apples, and then proceed to a food processor. Process the cored apples through a food processor with a shredding attachment. After that, remove the shredded apples and switch to a blending blade to process the apples until they're fine like applesauce. Doing it in two steps like this, I find, produces a finer applesauce, a better apple cider, and it's actually faster than trying to grind up the quartered apples whole. Process the apples with the blender attachment for several minutes. The apples should be broken down until they make a thick, soupy applesauce. This helps release the apple's natural pectin, which stabilizes the resulting apple cider. I have found the best apple press is a small plastic mop bucket with a ringer. They're inexpensive and very easy to sterilize. Line the ringer with clean cotton cloth. Place the pulp in the cloth, wind it up, and then press out the apple cider. It's not just a factor of how hard you press, but also how long you hold. It'll be necessary to redistribute the apple pulp a couple times and repress to get all the cider out. Cider from apple presses tends to be much thicker, more stable, and more flavorful than cider from electric juicers. Once you're done with your pressing, put the resulting apple cider in a clean bottle and store it for up to 10 days in the refrigerator. The dark color you see is normal for home pressed apple cider and reflects a level of flavor you won't find in any other store-bought apple ciders.